to recognize the not only the dean of Congress, but what we consider as the dean of the automotive industry. Mr. Dingo, you are now recognized. Your friendship, for your very fine introduction, and for the uh, having of this hearing today. First, welcome to our witnesses, especially Joe Henrick, who comes from the great company Ford, which is headquartered in my district. I'd also like to welcome Chris Nielsen from Toyota. The uh, trucks his plant makes were substantially designed in my district. Now I'd like to use my time to gain a better understanding of the potential benefits of a free trade agreement between the United States and the European Union. Trade is a tricky subject, and I think here there may be an opportunity to do some good, as long as it results in job creation and advances the public interest. Mr. Henrik, does Ford currently export vehicles to parts or, or parts from the United States to the EU, yes or no? Yes. Uh, Mr. Henrik, has Ford announced plans to expand its vehicles or parts exports to the EU, yes or no? Yes, we have. Mr. Hendrix, are there differences between U.S. and EU vehicle standards, yes or no? Yes, there are. Uh, does Ford believe these differences inhibit its ability to export vehicles from the United States to the EU? Yes. Do? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Henrich, would harmonization of these standards reduce Ford's design, engineering, and manufacturing costs? Yes or no? Yes, they would. Mr. Henrich, would harmonization of these standards benefit all automakers with a manufacturing presence in the United States? Yes or no? Yes, they would. Uh, Mr. Hendricks, does Ford believe that harmonization of these standards with EU would not lead to a diminution in U.S. vehicle occupant safety? Yes or no? Yes. Now, Mr. Hendricks, and just so my colleagues and I understand the term harmonization a little better, would you please submit for the record what Ford believes the term would mean within the context of the trade deal which we are now discussing? With the European Union? Just, yes. And just submit that for the record. Okay, we will, yes. Now, Mr. Henry, does Ford believe harmonization of standards would aid in the development of common global vehicle platforms? Yes or no? Yes. Now, Mr. Henry, would the development of such platforms enhance Ford's ability to export from the United States? Definitely, yes. And that would generally benefit American manufacturers, too, would it not? Yes. Now, Mr. Hendricks, does Ford believe U.S. automakers can be competitive in price and quality by exporting from the United States? Yes or no? Yes. Now, I'd like to ask a question or two about how a potential U.S.-EU free trade agreement might influence trade relations with Asian countries. Mr. Hendricks, again, are standards in Asian countries where vehicles are produced different than the U.S. and E.U. standards, yes or no? Yes, they are. Now, Mr. Henrik, am, am I correct that China alone is expected to expand its production to, 12, uh, to well over 20 million vehicles in the near future, yes or no? Yes. Now, Mr. Henrik, does China, uh, although China does not export many automobiles today, do you expect China to eventually become a major auto exporter? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. Uh, and the U.S. and E.U. respectively have 15 million vehicle markets. Is that correct? Generally, yes. Now, Mr. Hendricks, with this in mind, would common standards help U.S. and E.U. vehicle manufacturers to compete better with their Asian counterparts, yes or no? Yes. And also specifically with regard to the Chinese? <laughs> All the Asian manufacturers. Now, in conclusion, does Ford believe a U.S.-EU trade, free trade agreement would create opportunities to enhance U.S. global competitiveness, yes or no? Yes. Now, Mr. Hendricks, I'd like to contrast the potential benefits of a U.S.-EU free trade agreement with what would happen if Japan is allowed to, to join the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. Is it true that foreign automakers have only 
approximately a 5% market share in Japan. Yes. I would note that I have been complaining about this having existed because of the way the Japanese behave with regard to closing down on imports. Now, Mr. Hendricks, based on Ford's experience, is it reasonable to assume that permitting Japan to become a party to TPP would result in Japan's making meaningful policy changes? Yes or no? No, it wouldn't. So if we're going to let them in, we ought to see to it that they first agree that they're going to open their markets. Am I correct? Yes. Now, Mr. Hendricks, in other words, the potential benefits to U.S. automakers would be greater in a U.S.-EU free trade agreement than in a TPP with Japan as a member. Yes or no? Yes. So thank you, Mr. Hendricks. It seems that there are significant opportunities for U.S. automakers in a free trade agreement with the EU, but questionable benefits if the Japanese get in, in into a TPP without opening their markets, which have been closed tighter than a drum since World War II. Is that right? Yes. Thank you for your courtesy, Mr. Chairman. And I am delighted to see that the committee is going into these matters. And since the committee has jurisdiction over these things, I would expect that we will actively and very interestedly see to it that the TPP is in the benefit of the United States, our workers and our industry, and not in the benefit of a market closing country like Japan. Thank you. So noted and brilliantly done as usual.